Yeah, there you are like an idiot in front of a screen with a mouse that doesn't respond, an application that won't open, and you're wondering, but they said it's fantastic that I have to try it. Those who use Hyperland literally adore it, and rightly so, because Hyperland captures the desires of a segment of users who have been searching for a long time for something that combines beauty, configurability, customization, usability, immediacy, and productivity. So many things together that rarely, and perhaps never before Hyperland, has a window manager, or rather a true desktop environment, because that's essentially what it is, managed to achieve. More precisely, it's a tiling window manager. A tiling window manager, for those who don't know, is a system that automatically organizes windows without overlapping them, optimizing space and productivity, but it requires a keyboard-focused approach rather than mouse-based. Yet, there you are in front of your PC, ready to reboot, wondering if something isn't really working, not so much in the system, but in the heads of many who praise this tiling window manager as if it were salvation. Yes, shiny windows, exceptional animations, everything super responsive, but perhaps caught up in enthusiasm, they forgot to explain a couple of things to you. From your point of view, not theirs. As users, not keyboard wizards. I personally don't use Hyperland. It's not for me. It doesn't fit into my way of understanding a productive environment. However, as you'll have understood, I recognize that it's a masterpiece. Anyone who doesn't admit it probably understands little about graphical interfaces and technology in general. That said, even well-meaning users forget to mention a couple of important things. We're talking about a young project, constantly evolving, receiving frequent updates, still presenting bugs and requiring a certain level of experience to manage. At least this is my opinion. Hyperland isn't ready for the masses yet, not now, but it's getting closer and each new release is more stable, more coherent, more polished. The development team works impeccably. Even today, many historic distributions don't include it. Debian, Ubuntu, and their entire ecosystem don't support it natively unless you compile the packages manually. That's why I suggest you approach Hyperland as a game, as a discovery, not as the core of your main system. Don't make it your daily work environment. Not yet. Maybe, unlike me, you'll end up unable to live without it. And what I'm about to tell you will help you avoid rebooting your computer every two minutes. But the keyboard geniuses also forgot to tell you another thing. The key combinations to move around and use the desktop. This comes first, before everything else. Another thing everyone takes for granted is that you know what the super key is. Many people actually know it as the Windows key. So yes, when you hear talk of the super key, they're talking about that one. The key with the Windows symbol that, unfortunately, we find on all keyboards. Know that even if you type the commands correctly, they still might not work. Yes, you heard right. This is where things start to get complicated, and not just a little. Hyperland has its own standard configuration file located in your home folder. From there, you can open it, see all the key bindings, and modify them. But be careful, some distributions use completely different scripts or preset configurations. Cache OS, for example, uses a custom configuration with different key bindings. Here's the thing, Hyperland doesn't have a single standard. So the first real thing you need to do is understand exactly what you're dealing with. Commands generally don't change much, but they're not always the same everywhere. Super plus Q closes the window. Super plus zero takes you to desktop zero. Super plus one to desktop one, and so on. Super plus space opens the application launcher, from which you can start everything you need. I'd say that to begin, it's absolutely important to understand how to launch applications, close them, and move between desktops. Otherwise, you'd agree with me, you wouldn't be able to use your system. And if you can't open the terminal, you won't be able to modify the configuration files either. And with Hyperland, that means game over. Every aspect of the desktop, every window, every action has its keyboard combination. And it's fundamental, actually essential, extremely important that you know your system's key bindings. Only then can you start moving around understanding, assimilating the commands. Without those, you're toast. Adios. Waybar, Rofitop, Rofi.
In the end, you think everyone's speaking Elvish, and that you found yourself in the parallel world of Lord of the Rings, where probably some desperate Omarki fan is clutching their computer saying, My precious! Hyperland, besides being structured in a completely different way, has a series of independent additional components that integrate with the desktop to give it extra functionality. There isn't just one menu, there isn't just one bar, there are many, and if you've seen some screenshots online, you've probably seen extremely customized configurations that use a mix of these tools. So I invite you to get to know them, try them, because maybe you too, one day will be really satisfied with them. Of course, that question remains. Do I really have to look at the keyboard to use the computer? Come on guys, I'm joking. Let me keep a relaxed tone in this video. Let's get to the point. Once you understand how Hyperland works, it can really become a killer application. And believe me, you could really fall in love with it. Here I'll mention some for you so you can start familiarizing yourself a bit with the Hyperland ecosystem. But believe me, there are many, and every day a new one pops up. At the base there's obviously Hyperland, the heart of everything, the compositing window manager that handles windows, animations, transparencies, and tiling. It's the engine, everything else revolves around it. Then there's Hyperpaper, the wallpaper manager. Super lightweight, native, and perfectly integrated. If you want to change wallpaper in Hyperland, you do it from there, without dragging along daemons or useless processes. Hyperdal instead serves to manage system inactivity. When the PC sits idle, you can decide whether to turn off the screen, lock it, or suspend the session. And speaking of locking, there's also Hyperlock, the official lock screen. Modern, fluid, and customizable enough, all written with the same minimal and declarative philosophy as the rest of the environment. If you like taking screenshots, then you'll need Hypershot, the integrated utility for capturing the screen, a window, or a selected portion. It even has an elegant overlay and copies the image directly to the clipboard. Then there's Hypercursor, which manages cursor themes, an often overlooked detail but fundamental for those working on high DPI monitors or wanting aesthetic consistency. And Hypertia, the control console. From there, you can read the state, reload the configuration, move windows or workspaces, and script practically anything. But Hyperland doesn't live alone. It revolves around a galaxy of independent but perfectly integratable tools. The most well-known is Waybar, the bar most loved by Hyperland users. You can show battery, volume, date, network, workspaces, whatever you want with custom modules and a modern style. For launching applications instead, you need Rofi or Wofi. Rofi is the old timer, but still tied to X11. Wofi is the little brother native to Wayland, lighter and more coherent with the environment. For managing logout or shutdown, there's Logout, which shows you a minimal graphical menu with the classic options, restart, shutdown, suspend. For notifications, there's Mako, lightweight, clean, and compatible with transparencies and animations. Those who want more classic alternatives can use tools derived from the Sway world, like SwayBG for wallpapers, Swaydle for inactivity, and Swaylock as a lock screen, more mature but less integrated with the Hyperland style. For advanced screenshots, there's also the Grim Slurp combo, which lets you select an area and capture it directly from the terminal, or you can rely on WL Clipboard to manage copy and paste between native Wayland apps. Then there's the fundamental component that bridges all this with the rest of the system. XDG Desktop Portal that dash Hyperland, which allows Flatpak, OBS, or Firefox to access files, the screen, or devices in a secure and standard way. Finally, if you want to go overboard with customization, U comes into play, a framework for creating widgets and panels in HTML and CSS. It's perfect for those who want dynamic HUDs, graphs, or animated indicators directly on the desktop. In short, Hyperland isn't just a window manager. It's a small universe made of modular components, all designed to dialogue with each other. You can build it however you want, from a minimal environment with just Hyperland and Hyperpaper to a complete ecosystem with Waybar, U, and all possible graphical extensions. But you need to know, the more modules you add, the more complexity increases. And perhaps this is precisely Hyperland's charm, an environment where freedom is total, but where nothing is served to you ready-made. You have to build it yourself, and when you do, yes, it truly becomes your desktop. What I just told you might sound overwhelming. Well, 
Just know that this is only about 0.1% of the Hyperland world. And honestly, anyone who already knows this ecosystem will probably have a laugh watching this video because it's like a physics graduate listening to someone recite the one and two times tables. There's an alternative to Waybar. Actually, there are many. There are plugins, dot files, and probably hundreds of little utilities for customization. That's exactly why I made this video. Don't get discouraged. Take it slow. Start by reading the official Hyperland website, watch a few other videos, check out the documentation. It takes time. This video is just a breath, a rough overview meant to keep you from panicking. Hopefully. I always recommend building your setup step by step, calmly, understanding what you're doing. It's the best way to learn, to have control, and to know where to put your hands when something doesn't work. However, I also understand that many want to start immediately, see Hyperland in action, and maybe customize it later. And I won't deny that today there are really well-made scripts capable of installing and configuring a complete, beautiful, and functional environment in a few minutes, stuff that would save you days of work. The most famous is definitely Jay Coolit, who has created a series of scripts to install Hyperland on various distributions. There's the version for Arch Linux, which is the most complete. It automatically installs everything, from the window manager, to themes, to key bindings, to the main apps. Basically, you end up with a ready-to-use desktop, polished and coherent, without having to spend hours modifying configuration files. If you use Fedora, there's also a dedicated version, equally solid and updated with the latest Hyperland releases. Then there's ML4W, a more user-friendly setup, designed for those who want something that resembles a complete desktop environment. It's perfect if you want to enter the Hyperland world, but prefer to start from a more traditional base, where everything works and you don't have to spend hours in the terminal. Another interesting configuration is Hide, which aims for a minimal and clean approach. It's ideal if you want something lightweight, aesthetically polished, but without too many frills. You just have to be willing to get your hands a bit into the configuration files to adapt it to your needs. And finally, there's N4, one of the setups most appreciated by the community for its material aesthetic and the number of pre-configured applications. In short, possibilities aren't lacking. But I have to tell you one thing. Before running these scripts, always make a system backup. Some modify quite a few files and touch delicate configurations, so it's better to have a backup copy in case something doesn't go as expected. Also make sure that the script you choose is compatible with your distribution and with the version of Hyperland you're using because sometimes dependencies change and packages update faster than you think. And above all, even if you use a pre-packaged setup, don't stop studying its content. Open the files, look at how the key bindings are structured, how services are launched, how modules behave, because the difference between those who use Hyperland and those who understand it lies entirely there. Don't expect perfection. You'll always find some bug or detail to fix, especially if you have NVIDIA cards or a multi-monitor setup. But if you want to try Hyperland with minimal effort and an already mature result, these scripts are the ideal starting point. So I think I've given you a more or less complete overview to help you survive your first encounter with Hyperland. It's beautiful, isn't it? Give yourself some time. Once you start to absorb the commands, everything will come naturally. And if it doesn't, well, you can always do like me, Void Linux, XFCE, and always plenty of open source. Thanks for watching.